when Jehovah defeated the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, I knew he was with me. I felt strong. And then suddenly I was running for my life, hiding from Jezebel, feeling more like a frightened child than a prophet of the Most High God, praying to die. But Jehovah took care of me. Just as he had done so many times before. And later, he reassured me that I was not alone. I never was. There was more work to do, and that meant facing my enemies again. But Jehovah had been teaching me all along to wait on him. Now, what do you think? Why do we need patience, like Elijah? Well, because we face opposition and persecution, too. What are you dealing with? Are you being bullied at school? Treated, unf treated unfairly at work? Do you worry about persecution that might come from governmental authorities in the future? Or perhaps you've been opposed by someone that you love and who's supposed to love you. Maybe when you were learning the truth, somebody in your home, your marriage mate, did everything in their power to stop you from studying, stop you from going to meetings, and especially stop you from going in the ministry. When we face any of these forms of opposition, it leaves us feeling like Elijah felt, alone, afraid, discouraged, as if we can go on no more. If ever you feel that way, remember Elijah's example. We've been watching the first part of the Sunday Morning Symposium, a pattern of exercising patience, the prophets, and this is actually a seven-part symposium the first prophet featured being Elijah. That was the guy with the fake beard running through what I can only assume was the Californian desert. <laughs> so basically, normally, whereas they have a Bible drama, feature drama, where they can just go crazy with their fake beards, <laughs> because this year the feature drama isn't biblical, I guess they're just getting it out of their system <laughs> with this run of symposium mini dramatizations depicting Bible prophets. And again, this first one is Elijah and the speaker who we just saw giving his comments about opposition. That was Darcy McEwen from the Warwick headquarters. So he is a Bethelite who works basically in the same building as the governing body. And they're taking this story of a Bible prophet and somehow making it fit into their persecution narrative, trying to convince Jehovah's Witnesses that the world is out to get them and really kind of stoking up any kind of feelings in the audience of being repressed in any way, whether it's by being treated unfairly at work, whether it's by being taunted at school. Of course, bullying at school is a problem for many children, not just Jehovah's Witnesses. There are any number of reasons why you can be bullied at school. But what I found interesting was how Darcy McEwen blurred the lines there between opposing an individual and opposing an organization. So he said words along the lines of maybe you face opposition by family members, by people who you love and who you assume love you. 
maybe they're opposing you by insisting that you don't do the preaching or objecting to you attending the meetings and so on and so forth. So in my view, he's twisting the narrative somewhat. I can fully imagine a family member being absolutely appalled at beholding someone they care about getting sucked into a cult and saying negative things about that cult and negative things about going out preaching or going to the Kingdom Hall, I can imagine them perhaps handling things in a way that could be more tactful and a, a little bit more sensitive to the situation, but because they don't fully understand how cults work, they just go in all guns blazing. But no matter how clumsily they may deal with that difficult situation, it's coming from the right place. It's not coming from a place of opposing the person they care about. It's coming from a, pa a place of opposing the cult that the person that they care about is getting sucked into. So I think it's a very interesting game of manipulation that Darcy McEwen from Warwick headquarters is playing here. Thank you.